What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this modern live edge wall clock. So never built a clock before, but I'm super happy with the way this came out. This is a super simple project, an easy one day build, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So if you've got any small pieces of hardwoods hanging around your shop, this would be a great project for that. Also, before we get started with this one, I just want to mention that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So stay tuned to see how you can get 10% off your Squarespace website. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this build. You might remember a few weeks ago when I built a pair of live edge end tables from a walnut slab that I'd had lying around. I ended up cutting that slab into a few pieces and had this really cool crotch cutoff left over from the project. I've been trying to come up with some ideas for that piece and after hunting around on Pinterest, I found these super cool live edge clocks. The common thread between all these style of clocks was the metal ring that kind of contained the edge of the clock, which really gives them this clean modern look. So my first step was to hunt down some suitable rings. After considering and then rethinking buying a ring bender and making some rings myself, I started looking around for an already available option and found these 14 inch macrame rings at my local Joanne Fabric. At $350 per ring, they were plenty cheap and had a super cool look, so I bought a handful and brought them back to my shop. Now, this slab was pretty rough with a good amount of twists, so the first step was to get it flat. I removed the excess from the slab at the bandsaw so that it would fit through my planer and then got to flattening. To get one side flat, I decided to pull out my low angle jack plane and put a little sweat equity into this piece. The slab was too wide for my jointer and I figured this would give me some good hand plane practice. I got the piece mostly flat and then moved over to the planer to get it totally flat. Now there was still a little bit of twist left in the slab so I had to encourage it through the planer on the first few passes, but I eventually got it flat. After the piece was cleaned up, I carefully traced the inside of the ring onto the piece and then moved over to the bandsaw to cut it to shape. I made sure to really take my time here and stayed well clear of my line on the first pass. I wanted these rings to have a friction fit on the piece, so I really needed to be careful not to remove too much material. I purposely left a good bit of extra material when cutting the piece on the bandsaw, so next I moved over to the oscillating belt sander to slowly sneak up on the fit. It's surprisingly easy to refine curves with this tool and I just took my time checking my fit regularly and I used a 120 grit belt on the sander so I wouldn't overshoot my fit and this worked out really well. After about 15 minutes of sanding, I got the exact fit I was looking for and went ahead and added all the rings. And since they were so tight, they really didn't need any kind of adhesive, but I added a few spots of CA glue off camera just for a little extra insurance. With the rings fitted, I went ahead and sanded the piece up to 180 grit to prep for finish. And while I'm sanding, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. I've personally been using Squarespace for my website for about a year now, and I love it. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning templates, and their all-in-one platform makes it super easy to make your next move with Squarespace. There's nothing to install, update, or patch like some other web platforms, and their 24-7 customer support makes it super easy to get help if you need it. To make your next move with Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash crafted workshop to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. After sanding, I applied a few coats of wipe on poly, which really brought out the figure in this crotch slab. It's just gorgeous. And I love that little bit of remaining live edge. It's just enough to add some visual interest to the piece while still keeping it super clean looking. Once the finish had dried, it was time to install the clock moving. And first I needed to find the center of the clock, which <laughs> proved to be a little bit tricky. I looked up a few methods online, I'm not gonna try to explain them here, but I finally found one that worked for me and marked the center point of the circle. Next, I moved over to the drill press and drilled a hole for the movement to fit through. And by the way, I'll have a link to the exact clock movement I used in the video description below if you wanna build one of these for yourself. After drilling the center hole, I needed to clear out an area on the back side of the clock for the movement to fit in. And this recess serves two purposes. First, it recesses the movement and allows the clock to sit flush against the wall. And second, it allows the shaft of the movement to have clearance past the front face of the slab. To create this recess, I used an inch and a quarter Forstner bit on the drill press. And this recess really doesn't need to be pretty since no one will ever see it. And the drill press is a lot less messy than a router, which would have been my other option. And even though no one will ever see the back of this clock, after drilling out the recess, I still cleaned it up a little bit with a chisel, mostly just to silence the haters in the comments section. And finally, I could test fit the movement and it fit perfectly. The hands on the movement are white out of the box, but I decided to add a little color pop and spray paint the hands this awesome mint color, which I think really pairs nicely with the walnut and gold rings and is kind of a traditional mid-century modern color. 
Once the paint dried, I permanently installed the movement and then installed a D-ring on the back of the clock for hanging the clock. After that, all that was left was to hang the clock on the wall and get a sweet time lapse to show that the clock actually works. And with that, the clock was finished. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a really simple project, but I'm super happy with the way it came out. It's kind of nice to get these simple wins sometimes in the shop when you're kind of in between bigger projects. I know I have quite a few big projects coming up and I've been working on some larger projects in the past couple of weeks. So knocking out a one day build that was super easy was really, really nice. Also, before I close out this video, I just want to shout out Isotunes who, in case you don't know, are one of my longer term sponsors. It's the only kind of hearing protection I wear here in the shop. It's great for listening to music or audiobooks or podcasts while you're working. And there are a lot more comfortable than the larger over-ear headphones that I used previously. So if you want to learn more about Isotunes, I'll have a link to those in the video description below, as well as links to all the tools and materials I use for this project. And if you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also ring that little notification bell so you're notified every time I put out new videos or announce new live streams. All right, thanks again for watching everybody, and until next week, happy building.